Welcome to 10 Minutes. I'm Tony Scott. Hello. How are you doing, P.O.? Uh, I'm okay. My eyes are still a little unfocused from being dilated, but uh, I'm hanging in there. I'm going to congratulate you this week. You've, you've graduated from unlogoed YHH gear to logoed It's not YHH my fault. Gear. I'm not the one who bought unlogoed YHH gear. That must have been like from the sample pile or something. Probably. I was looking at, okay. As much as I might think I'm in great shape, I cannot fit into a small YHH vest. So the you could. Only, it'd be a little snug. It, it's bad. The only other ones that we have are the XLs, which which is why I have you, you know seven like feet of extra fabric. Prenatal, going to your prenatal class. It's a medium. Yeah. It's a no. This is like a, this That's is one good. of those shirts that you wear after binging McDonald's all day. Um, You've just given up. We have a sponsor for today's show, Do Map we? South Hockey. Uh, have great programming for both boys and girls, great culture, uh, great teachers, and you've been to the building several times. If you work out at Map South. Talk about the facility. The facility's got everything you could ever want. You've got the oh, ice sheet, you got buckets of pucks Disney laying around land. everywhere, you got the weight room connected to the locker rooms outside. There are some shooting tarps and plastic ice. So really any time of the year, if you find yourself in Map South, you'll be working on your game and you'll be avoiding having to wear one of these, these XL vests. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, this is gonna be the, the shortest 10A, 12A oh, edition we've ever had. Because See, you say that, but. Because there's nothing really to talk about because Minnetonka did it again. Yeah. Deja vu. They win the Cupid Classic at the 10A and the 12A. Yeah. Um, they won it two weeks earlier at Bloomington Ice Guard. I, better, yeah. I wonder if it was kind of weird for the Tonka girls. Like, like we yeah, just we celebrated just like this. this. I don't know why you have to bring the French into it with deja vu, <laughs> but I mean, nice work, Skippers. You can only play who you play, and you rolled through the Cupid Classic this weekend. Good for you. And they really, I mean, the number two at 12A we've seen, Edina, we haven't seen number two at 10A yet, Woodbury. They no. keep rolling up dubs, too. So I would love to see that game between Tonka and Woodbury sometime. Well, I don't think Woodbury didn't play last week, but they might be the only team that can hang with the skippers at Correct. this point. Correct. I, I agree with that. All right. Uh, this is a special no Andover zone. You this can't week. say it, though. You the just rest said of the it. Show, the rest of the show, we it. won't say the A word the rest of the show. Can I say I it before no, we move on? No, it's not allowed. And not allowed this week, uh, which mm. leads us to the number two team in 15A. Oh, yeah. Edina. Let's, wow, way off the board. Yeah, here. they're number two behind another team. I can't remember who that is. Oh, there's my phone. I love you gotta that. You got to be kidding me. I love that. You got to right. be Tell us about Edina. kidding me. Edina has outscored their first seven opponents. 47 to 1 this season. They are 7 and 0. Uh, according to our now rankings, they're number two behind Andover and just ahead of Edina White. Yeah, I don't know Edina White hasn't Green that is tough number two. Yet. Edina White yeah, is technically but number three. Their, their schedule hasn't been that tough. Well, they're, if you if you combine the two teams, you get a record of 13 0 and 2, which I don't care who you're playing. If that's you haven't good. lost yet, that's good. Pretty good in my book. Lots of nuggets this week in girls' high school hockey. Would you call them chicken nuggets or spicy I chicken nuggets? I think spicy. These, there's two of them are spicy. Okay. You want me to go okay. with the first one, the Gentry Academy one? Yeah, well, I have so much to say about Dominant this one. team. Yeah. Um, they're undefeated, I believe. No. They, who who, they who, who beat them? Who beat them? They lost to South St. Paul. Okay. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. Um, very That's good team. Nugget guy. They are uh, in 5A this year. No, they are not. in 5A. I still refuse to believe that. They are in 5A. You've confirmed it with the principal at their school. I have. We've confirmed it with the website on the MSHSL. But may I say That's something? That's a good hockey team combined with Chisago and Breck for girls hockey. Don't forget, uh, no, Orno's in two. Never mind. I have a bone to pick. Are they in two? Orono? Yeah. I think so. Okay, I think they're, yes. they aren't too? Okay, good. they battle it out with Mount West Mount Tonka. Tonka. I have a bone to pick with whoever Is updated. Is Hutch in that one too? I don't know. Two? I think they are. I thought you were like a girls hockey I'm picking a bone right now. Right, stop picking bones. I'm picking All a right. bone. It said that Gentry was in section 4A on the State allegedly, High School League website. Allegedly. I swear it did. I wouldn't have written, I wouldn't have mentioned it twice. Allegedly. In two different stories if it hadn't have been true. Okay. So I swear the girls hockey team was listed in section 4a on the state high school sure. website in your swear fantasy swear all right 
And are you done? Yeah, I'm what done. What do you think of them being Picking in bonds. 5A with Chisago and Brack? I think it's shaping up to be a little bit like Section 6 in Class AA, where you can yeah. have your own state tournament. I agree. Um, Warroad has beaten AA Rozo twice, 7-1 yep, and 3-1. And they're going to get one more crack at the Rams. I think Later they play on this four times this year. They play four? The boys do. I think the girls do, too. They might. Yeah. So Boy, that's a lot. It would be pretty cool to get up there for a game. Wink, it, wink, wink. Yeah, wink, wink, Mr. and Mrs. Marvin. Lodge us up there. We would do that. But I think that's a big step for war. You would like, you'd go on the plane, wouldn't you? And go I, to have, a game? I've already done it. You, well, yeah. you went to Thief River. Well, I rode a six-seater bush plane with, for the boys. With a you've never bucket seen of soda. a World Rozo girls game. No, bummer. Mm -hmm. Got to see that one. Oh, we'll maybe, put, maybe this video will get you up there. I'll put that on my bucket list. I'd like to see that. That's a good <laughs> squad. That's a good squad. Um, and then we have a girl. Her name's Naomi Caradice. International Falls last night, one hundred and. 97 saves, she faced 107 shots on goal, Gross. which is not a state record, by the way. No, it's not. But it's darn close. It's the state record for saves in a regulation game. Uh, it was Taylor Baumhoffner, who had 118 18 saves in 2007. Seven. Which means that she probably <laughs> Face, like at 120 least 120, 120 125, 130 shots. Which, so. it, which is hilarious because the alleged record for shots in a game <laughs> is 100. Right. But mysteriously, you're, oh you're, you're taking a shot there at the high school league's website. Well, find a freelancer, pay him 50 bucks, Get and in have line. him figure out the record book. Get in line. So but it's, a school, it's a school record for International Falls. Yes. Congratulations, sure. Naomi. And Karen. that thing, before this thing even goes live, I'm guessing, because this is uh, Wednesday at noon. By Thursday at noon, I'm guessing she's going to hit the, all the wires. Eventually, people are going to figure that one out. I mean, I would hope so. I would hope you so. You face 107 so. shots in a game, you're you should make probably it. get some sort of recognition. Gonna, Her save percentage is amazing. after facing 107 91%. shots was 907. That's amazing. That's really good. That's really good. Really, That's really, 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 really good. Because sometimes after you've given up four or five, you kind of give up too. Apparently she, she did didn't not give up. give up. That was the most impressive part about that stat. I, I would also say good for Proctor Hermantown for not giving up either. Because if I was playing against a team that I was clearly outmatched by, I would want them to keep playing until the game was over. Yeah. So the Mirage had 30-some shots in the first period, 40 in the second, and another 30 in the third. 40 shots in the period? They scored five times in the third <laughs> Think period. Think about that. I would want to play it out. I would not want someone to sink into a possession, yeah. hand the puck back and forth on the blue line. I'm here to play, so Let's play. play. I agree. Um, more news from up near uh, Duluth. UMD this time. Gabby Hughes gets her 100th point. No one is surprised. <laughs> no, zero. no one is surprised. Zero surprise there. <laughs> um, Wisconsin continues to be the dominant number one team in women's hockey. Um, eight and two. They've only allowed a goal a game, basically. What makes their D so special? All of the Minnesota players. Oh, of have course. On their D line, so obviously. Speed that one up. Katie Kotlowski, uh -huh. who led Warroad to multiple state tournament appearances. Yep. We've got Mason Toft from Lowry, Alex. but she played for Alexandria. Yep. And then Grace Bolby Where is she from? from Edina. We're going to have the E word next week. No Edina girls next week. That's going to be the new word. For a girl show if we can't talk about Andover Edina or Andover. Or Andover. Well, <laughs> nope. Sorry. Sorry, my fault. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. How could you? That's the key thing about Wisconsin is that they're not exactly lighting up the scoreboard with 10 or 12. I think they scored 10 against St. Cloud State, but uh, a lot of people score 10 against <laughs> St. Cloud State. They don't, they don't put 10 on the board every game, but they have an excellent defense, good goaltending. That's a team that has sustainable pieces that should carry it deep into the postseason. I think they are my odds-on favorite to win the national championship this no year. No offense, St. Cloud State. I'll take the field if you want to take Wisconsin. I will take Wisconsin right now. I'll take the field. And... Forever. All day. Okay, uh, let's move on to pro hockey. A lot going on up in Lake Placid. Mm -hmm. Or is that over Lake Placid? I'm not sure how the uh, how that lines up. But they're northern uh, New York, that's for sure. Upstate, Upstate New York. New York. Um, the Metro Riveters, Metropolitan Riveters, and the Connecticut Whale have backed out yeah. due to COVID implications. Due to health and uh, safety concerns. Thank you. Uh, they've left the bubble. 
I, I got a question for you, and I, I'm, and I know you're not a, a employee of the NWHL, but I am not. if you're going into a bubble, you would all have all the people in the bubble would have entered under a quarantine, have been cleared of COVID, and then you entered the bubble with your bubble. How could you get it? And that's, how could it be a mass the, uh, outbreak of it? You know, I mean, I could see, oh yeah, someone got one, or, or maybe a onesie, and then then, then they quarantined. Like one that player person. from a team yeah. got it, and then three. But like got a whole it. team? Come on! I don't know what to tell you. That's is that a million, fair question? That's the. It is a fair okay, question. Okay, it's the million sure. dollar question. We, I unfortunately, I broke my New Year's resolution, and I read a comment stream on the <laughs> Athletic. <laughs> but, somebody, but somebody raised the question. They said, "Wow." What a terrible bubble. You yes. had two out of your six teams have had to leave. I know. Hopefully the other four can hang on and they can get to a well, championship. Oh, they all get a playoff and, spot. At they can get point, to a so. playoff. They get to a championship. Maybe your uh, T6 six. can uh, make their way to the Go six! So. <laughs> all right. Uh, game pucks. Uh, you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I'll go first. Right. Mine is a little bit of a mix of a game puck and kind of a boom roasted and a little bit of a, a PSA lot of everything. Yeah. for parents out there. My game puck is going to myself <laughs> oh number one because i need a little bit of love for myself because i have this great zit on my lip which is uh courtesy it's the size of, of a game buck it's the yep yeah, it, it it's work it's uh it's like a little planet on my face so anyway i'm gonna give myself the game puck for picking up somebody else's trash at the i'm not even gonna say the team don't say the game at a girl's high school game yep there's a gentleman sitting in the stands looked like he was having a nice time uh, all of a sudden I hear clattering and it sounds just like a can rolling down the bleachers. And I think, oh, well, that's not that crazy. Some people bring in sparkling water, some people bring Diet in Coke. sodas. Uh, some people, like this gentleman, bring in Bud Light seltzers, which tells me you couldn't finish it in the parking lot. <laughs> So you just that's, felt that's, the need. That should to be your first sign. Bring it right? into the game. Which is it's just a big no no, right? Just why? But keep going. So you watch it go down the bleachers, and I saw you, gentlemen, <laughs> peek over and look where it ended up. And then apparently, in the 10 seconds between the period ending and you dropping your can, decided that you just weren't going to clean it up because you bolted for the door. So I picked up your Bud Light seltzer can. So you get the game puck. Pick something better to drink next time. Don't bring it into the arena. Drive safe. Have a sober driver. Your first sign should be you brought the Bud Light seltzer in. But the second sign of, of this is actually littering on top of that. Like it That's wasn't the part enough. that annoys me Yeah, the I most. agree. I agree. Uh, I'll be a little bit more positive. Uh, last week, Tonka and Wyzetta girls played. Game had to end due to a uh, Minnetonka mother yeah. um, having some medical issues, enough to bring in heavy uh, medical support to, to save her. And our game puck goes out to her and all of the girls uh, that had to be part of that. I mean, you have your have a game end. I mean, the game means nothing by this point. But to kind of watch all this and the scariness of that. So my game puck to all those involved, especially the uh, for, uh, first responders who were able to help this woman and get her stable and get her healthy. So yeah. huge game buck to all those people. Last but not least, we're on to the uh, if you could session. This is if you could do one thing. So this is fantasy land for, for us. Uh, my wife, Debbie, and his girlfriend, Lara, would never bring us breakfast in bed. But if we could ever have breakfast in bed delivered to us, ever. what would we have delivered to us? <sighs> Come on. Here. This is near and dear to my heart. Mickey's Diner Steak and Eggs. Ooh, Two sunny good. side up that eggs, really a good. rare steak with hash browns and white toast. I want butter on my toast. I want Heinz fifty seven with the hash browns. And so, so at three so, in the morning or three so in the is afternoon. So Laura you running out it. to take out and gonna do this, or is she gonna try to mimic exactly what Mickey's does? I would rather have the takeout. Okay, you're getting no the takeout. Um, I can't get that because my place is no longer open. Uh, college haunt of mine over at the U of M it was actually closer to Augs, where it's called Big Olaf's. They Big made these Olaf. skillets. And in the skillet was uh, potatoes, pe peppers and onions. It's hash. Um, you had hash. Egg, and then sausage cheese. and bacon, a little cheese, everything, basically. Hash. All in one little skillet. I'd go and meet my dad there for... For breakfast How'd you during get there? college, I would drive. How'd your dad get there? Which was like a two-minute drive. I could have probably rode my bike there. 
Uh, my dad from South Minneapolis by Lake of the Isles would bike over to the Augsburg campus and meet me for breakfast. So wow, put to shame uh, yes, by and, Jim. And we would eat and uh, be merry and have father son heart to heart. So, do you, so do you think that your breakfast choice is based on the flavor of the breakfast or on the memories that you had with your dad? Uh, for this one, it's memories of dad, but I do love that skillet. And I think one of the Perkinses or whatever has a skillet. One of them has a skillet. I get that every time. If I see skillet on a, on a menu, You're I'm on that. it. That or Eggs Benedict every time. Yes. All right. Eggs Benedict's uh, my number two choice. No egg on our faces uh, this week for this show. Um, maybe we you for ripping on St. Cloud. Sorry, St. Cloud. But we Cloud. won't rip on Map South Hockey. Never. Because they're legit. Uh, check them out, mapsouthhockey.com. Thanks for their sponsorship. Thanks to you for helping me put together a fun Andoverlish show. What? We'll see you next week on 10 Minutes with Tony Scott. You're gonna live your life.